don't think we need a roll call, but uh, if anybody insists, <laughs> at uh, whatever, 4, four uh, 32 or somewhere around that time. All right. Anybody from the public? Sheila, you want to say anything? Uh, no, nothing to say. Anything. <laughs> <laughs> Very good to see everybody yet again. Uh, okay. All right. Approval of the minutes. Has everybody had a chance to review the March 20th uh, meeting minutes? Did uh, I'm sure they were. As usual, Joanne captured everything appropriately. <laughs> She's very good at doing that. Who's doing it? Where is she today? Joanne is uh, not feeling well today. Oh, so, cool. uh, she sends her regrets. Okay. So, can, do uh, anybody want to make a motion then to approve the minutes of My March 20th? I approve the minutes. All second. Okay, great. We, anybody opposed? Glenda? <laughs> Are all in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed? Motion passed, except the minutes. The uh, uh, sessions today. Thank you. Liz on her, do I don't have a ton today. Um, the first thing on the list is there was a bunch of books that had been deaccessioned many, many years ago. Um, so I can fill in a little more of the backstory on this. There was a very young green archivist <laughs> that worked for the museum back in 1996. Is he still here? Um, he is, in fact, still here, yes. But he's no longer the archivist. <laughs> <laughs> they, they got rid of him. <laughs> they got rid of him? Um, and uh, he did uh, a lot of deaccessioning of books, and there were some that he thought better of and set on a back shelf to sort of figure out what to do with later, and they sat there for a very long time until Elizabeth came along and said, what are these books doing here? And I said, oh yeah, those are ones I thought we should probably not get rid of after all. So that is, that's why we are now seeing them come back uh, for recommendation to be reinstated into the collection. Yeah, so I went through all the books and these are the ones that I agreed with Eric. Um, I think I agree with everything that you had said, like, oh, let's reinstate um, things that had a connection to Longmont. There were some Bibles that, albeit they're very large, um, like there's one that's Norwegian and there was a Norwegian uh, immigrant group here in Longmont, so you know, it makes sense to have that representation. So yeah, so we're just looking for a vote to put them back into the collection. <laughs> and we probably we might do that as a separate vote, just since it's a little different than a standard accession. Um, just a vote to reinstate. Yeah. Uh, so what a motion, is that what you want? Yeah. Okay. Well, who's running the meeting? Well, <laughs> Callie's here, so we're going to let her uh, take over. Tom is going to step aside. Uh, obviously, we're on the agenda on item number five. And have we voted yet on the standard yeah, sessions? Nope. We've only looked at this one? Yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, so do we have a motion to reinstate these books as part of that session? No motion to reinstate the books. Do you have a second? I have a question. How, yeah. how large was the Norwegian community in Longmont? Uh, they had that Visby church out in Hygiene, and um, I think there was a Lutheran church here that had a pretty sizable Lutheran community. I don't know numbers-wise. Um, and it wasn't the largest of the immigrant groups, but Scandinavian as a whole, probably uh, third or fourth largest among the uh, ethnic groups that came into this area. And when did they come into this area? Late 1800s. Late 1800s. Mm -hmm. okay. 
Yeah, Bethlehem Lutheran is an amalgamation of the Norwegian and German oh. Lutheran mm -hmm. churches. Norwegian had changed its name, but I didn't yeah, know. Yeah, I think it was in 36 they switched to English. Wow. <laughs> so they were they were Norwegian for a while. Yes, they were. Yeah. So that's 36 and they switched to English. That's a great, that's great. <laughs> Um, and then do we want to do a vote on whether um, to do the succession? All in favor? Okay. Okay. Yes. Thank you. There is only one item to uh, vote on for complete new sessions here. And that is this. That's cool. So this is a large mural. I would say the bottom piece is longer than this table. About just a little taller. Um, and then the top piece actually sits on top of the darker piece on the bottom, and I kind of put the two pictures like this. Uh, they've been hanging at the youth center for almost 30 years now. The top piece, they were on separate walls, that's why they're separate pictures. They're, it's so big that they didn't have a space there to put them um, in, their, in the way that they were originally intended. Uh, this was part of a project in the 90s to fight um, <sighs> gangs and violence among youth, particularly in the Hispanic community in the 90s, kind of mid to late 90s. <clears throat> and uh, a woman who is, uh, she's still around, but she works up in Fort Collins, Dr. Kelly, um, sorry, Dr. Norma Huerta Kelly. Um, she is a psychology professor um, at the university up there. She, this was one of her first jobs, was hired. She, she raised money. They worked with professors at CU. I guess they were a weekly. Um, they've also brought work with this guy, Leo Tanguma, who is known around here for doing the murals at the airport. Um, this is before he did those. <laughs> uh, they were able to uh, contract him to work with the youth to create a, a mural to basically process what they were going through. Um, so the bottom are sort of like temptations, um, the things that they could fall into, the kind of like the bad things. Um, it's pretty dark. It's kind of hard to tell here, but there's like teen pregnancy. Um, there's... Uh, drugs and alcohol uh, interpreted at the bottom. And then the top is kind of everything that kind of gives them the hope to uplift them away from that stuff. So there's portraits of family members, some family members who have passed away by then. Uh, some of the youth that worked on this in the 90s are no longer with us. Um, and some of them are, including Gamma Acosta, who does, has done one of the murals downtown. Um, his name is on this. I haven't been able to contact him. <laughs> I've been trying to contact him. I've got his phone number now, tried email, tried Instagram, so we'll probably kind of give them him a call. Uh, so, and there's, you know, elements of Catholicism in this, and obviously uh, most of the names are Hispanic. It was also a joint effort with the Longwell Police, so there was sort of that element too. Um, so I think this is a really interesting piece to sort of represent the 90s and the um, relationship with the Hispanic community and what it meant to be um, a young person here at that time and in that community. Um, so yeah, they were renovating their building and this had to come down and they asked us if we wanted it. And after doing some research, uh, I think it's something that's worth potentially exhibiting, um, especially as we probably potentially uh, will be interpreting the 90s <laughs> in our history exhibit. So, um, but Gamma was one of the mm -hmm. new team you yeah. did this. Mm -hmm. You can't quite see, but there's a bunch of signatures at the on like the feathers and in the very end corners of the mural that have been cut off in the photo. Do we have any other questions at this item? Do we have any immediate plans for it or? It's just at the MCC right now. Um, we might uh, display it during Day of the Dead. Right. Uh, right. There was talk of maybe even doing a reunion with those who worked on it. Um, Dr. Huerta Kelly is interested in that, so 
We'll see. <laughs> Um, do we have a motion? Is this the only accession? It's the only accession. No, no, I'll move to acquire the, um, this mural. Do we have a second? A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. And then we have deaccessions. Um, so a little explanation. I don't know that this board is at least in, everyone on the board has done a deaccession, but basically it's the opposite of an accession. It's removing something from the collection. Um, and it actually requires a higher standard instead of just a majority vote. It's a two thirds vote uh, to remove something from the collection. So we have had this collection of um, documents relating to an Artemis Hyde of upstate New York. Um, his great, 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 great granddaughter, Barbara Hyde, was um, a prolific writer in the Longmont Times in the mid 20th century. Um, I think she was a much beloved community member. And she had donated these, likely to the library, and then when the library collection merged with the museum collection in the 90s, this came along with it. Um, it shows up in an inventory in 1999, so it's been here for 25 years, at least, and probably longer. Um, we went through it. There's like one document that relates to Colorado, and even that is Greeley. Um, what it seems to be is mostly legal paperwork. Artemis Hyde seemed to be a lawyer who signed off on a lot of legal, like, uh, sales of land is one of the most common type of documents in here, um, all relating to mostly property in this upstate New York area, um, sort of in the somewhere in the Finger Lakes region. And I already contacted a archive out there who would love to have this. I think it makes more sense there from you know anyone who's doing research on property or um, family members who lived in that area. They're not going to be coming to Longmont, Colorado. <laughs> Uh, and it's also like older. I mean, it's mostly 1840s to 50s. Um, so it's it's before the, the sort of settlement of Longmont anyway. So uh, I would like permission to send these to New York to a different archive. Did you donate, did the donor donate anything else? Is this part of a larger collection or is this just a discrete separate collection? As far as we, there isn't any real documentation this, it was in boxes when I arrived in 96, and my understanding was that this was everything that, that she had donated, that she donated. Mm -hmm. but, and there's no real records of the donation. Um, so she did not donate her own personal papers having the family history no, of dealing with law no, no, This no. is just that it, papers dealing mm -hmm. with yeah, schools of sale. Yeah. And, you know, it's not uncommon to get offers like this even today where someone who lives here now has generations ago things that of someone no longer, who had no connection with Lama. Like, they came here in college or something, and this is the stuff that their great-grandparents from Iowa. Like, I've fielded a lot of these kind of requests. And, you know, nowadays with the internet, it's really easy to just, like, look up, like, hey, there's a local historical society. Maybe you should contact them. But in the past, it was like, oh, yeah, these are old. They should go somewhere special. And, you know, it, they took them because they knew it was special and she was an interesting person. But it doesn't make any sense. And I think Eric, you said no one's ever like, requested. No, in, in all the years, uh, I think the only time was her and her family called once and like, are our things still there? It was like, yep. They're still in the boxes, and they're like, okay, you know, so. so we're going to get rid of them. <laughs> <laughs> so I would let them know that these are going to go to New York so that if they did need to do research, they could always go there. Yeah. yeah that was my question. If, yeah. Are we going to notify uh, them? Barbara Hyde has passed away, the woman who yeah. we think donated them. But, um, and if I recall, her children did not live in Colorado. I think they're like California and Washington State or something. Not they're not local either at this point. Do you have any other questions? This question? So 
there no. a movement to support the recommendation? I'll move that we uh, send these boxes to New York. <laughs> Is there a second? All in favor? And there is one more. I think it makes sense to vote on these separately since they require a vote. This is a slew of books uh, donated by Kent and Nancy Brown. Uh, Eric, you said these were the former directors? Uh, Kent was, was museum director when I started here. Yeah. Um, he's, he's still alive and uh, lives at Fort Collins now. Um, but I don't think he even recalls that he donated <laughs> 19. <laughs> Uh, 60s cookbooks. I'm sure he was cleaning off his cookbook shelf. They're very fun, but what uh, the collection community decided is that these might make more sense. We have a collection of sort of reference books on antiques and various things like that over at NCC. Um, and so right now these are in the archive and they're getting sort of a level of care that just, you know, things that have relations to Longmont are getting. Um, these are nationally published books. They're available online easily. You know, you'd probably pick any of these up for a couple of bucks at a used bookstore. Um, so we're suggesting moving these from the permanent collection into a more like reference type use over at the MCC. So if we do do any kind of programming or what's, something, what's, like I'm sorry, what's the MCC? Oh, the Offsite Collection Storage. Oh, mm -hmm. Museum Collection Center. That's mm -hmm. what it stands for. Well, why hold on to them at all? That was something there, we talked about. There were so many copies <laughs> yeah. out. Um, I, I think mostly the thought is if we w were to ever do an exhibit of, you know, the 1960s or something, they're just a quick, handy reference. And, you know, certainly if we decide in a few years these are not materials we really need, once they've been deaccessioned, then we can easily just say, hmm, these are no longer, uh, we don't need these reference yeah. materials. I wouldn't have to come to you guys. Right. <laughs> you're, you're already here, right? Yes, you would. <laughs> yeah. It's a job for a future board. <laughs> That's right. Wow. And there, and we know, I assume, that there's not any long month residents that submitted recipes. Mm -mm. We I, have other types of books like this that do have long month submitted okay. recipes. That's something for sure we would keep in the archive. There's no like marginalia in any of these. I don't think so. Uh, well, this is this is not really a deaccession. This is just a relocation. I mean, it is a reassignment. It, it's a we would do it as a deaccession because once they're moved into the reference collection, then you know we're no longer treating them as part of our permanent collection. We're treating them as reference books. If we were to decide we want to display one page, we could cut that page out and put it on the wall. So, so we really would be changing their whole status mm -hmm. as their level of care and things like that. So then you could just toss them if you want. Right, and we could toss exactly. them if we decide. Right. There's these really yeah. obvious ones. Right. Okay. Any other questions about this collection? Do we have a movement to the accessions? So moved. There's a second. All in favor? Unanimous. Great. And that's it. Well done. <coughs> All right. Moving on to. You've had some stuff where uh, you've acquired something. Recipes back. We voted on a very old, like maybe 1890s, 1900s yeah. cookbook that right. had submitted recipes. Um, super interesting. Yeah, really um, interesting. And that one had handwritten recipes as well. And it had advertisements for Longmont businesses. Right. right. So that um, is now in the collection, in the archive, cataloged. Um, Was that a German family or? It was, we're not sure who, it, it seemed like it's almost like a, all the business people kind of came together because I actually put in all of the businesses that were listed into the record and all of the people who submitted 
and it'd be like uh, AC Atwood, Mrs. AC Atwood, and then Atwood owned a dry goods store. Well, I'm just making things up, but like it was one of those things that the dry store owners made them be on the advertisement, and then the wife submitted a recipe on the next page. Oh. So I think oh, it was really yeah, yeah a way to promote local businesses around yeah. here. Right. Well, we will not take session now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, we'll use the session. It's, it's got to stay for a couple of years. <laughs> sure. We move on to reports. Okay. Um, so, sent out in the email was the director's report for um, March, April. Um, since we didn't have a meeting uh, in April. And then I handed out today the preliminary report for April, May. Um, we're, we're a little behind on our reports, so this is kind of incomplete. I don't have everything in here, but I just thought I would get a few highlights of, of the last month. Um, so the Stewart Family Courtyard, um, after the meeting, if anyone would like to stay and get a a uh, quick uh, walk around of the courtyard. Um, it is getting very close to done. It should be uh, hopefully pretty much wrapped up by the end of May. Uh, there's a few things that will hang over into June and we're gonna let the sod and the plantings get well established before we release the hordes uh, into them. So uh, it'll be September before we have our first event out there. Are you pleased with it? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think uh, it, it's much larger than I had realized. I mean, when you stand out there, you think, wow, this is so much bigger yeah. than the old courtyard. Um, and so I think we will have opportunities to bring in, you know, bigger name groups and uh, hopefully really be able to draw. Maybe some national uh, acts. <laughs> maybe, maybe, you know, it all takes takes the funding to uh, to pay them. But yeah. Uh, But yeah, certainly, Certainly, groups that um, before we would have said, "eh, they, they're they're too big for our courtyard." Now I think we can we can accommodate. So I'm very excited about that. Um, the 2024 city budget requests um, I have submitted them to uh, my boss Jeff Friesner with Recreation and Culture. Um, most of our ongoing requests do relate to the expansion of the museum. So we are requesting one new position, an assistant curator of exhibits, since the majority of the expansion is relating to exhibit galleries. Um, we're also requesting additional funds to rent traveling exhibits. Um, and then we have a, our, actually our largest request is a one-time request, which tend to be a little easier to get funded. Uh, so we've applied for a $250,000 grant that would fund the uh, construction of our new children's gallery, so staff and supplies and so forth for that. But we won't hear about that grant until August. And if we didn't get the grant, we really don't have time to turn around and reapply before the uh, building is open. So we're asking the city to basically backstop that because the city budget isn't final until uh, early, late August, and they usually announce the grant in early August. So we could say either, oh, we didn't get the grant, we really need that backstop, or got the grant, you can release that money for other uses. But um, if you are, happen to talk to any city council members, um, you know, particularly the assistant curator of exhibits is probably the most critical position that uh, we have. Um, because uh, we, you know, given that we're adding an entire another gallery, basically increasing the size of our uh, exhibit galleries by a third, and, you know, we have two staff right now um, to service those galleries. Um, it's a really essential position. So, what is the dollar figure? Um, that, that, like, if you add, the, put it all together um, uh, for the increase, I'm just curious. So. Total besides the of, 250. <laughs> besides the 250, um, and the it's, assistant job. Um, it's about 125,000 with the assistant curator and the uh, additional exhibit 
rental fees. And then there's a number of small requests that are basically kind of cost of doing business requests, mm -hmm. like go do this one up, things like that. Um, so the assistant curator, that alone is, is around 100000 between salary and benefits. And, and, um, uh, so say hypothetically, what's your inflation factor for next year? Ever, say you weren't asking for anything extra, and say you wanted, this year it's 100,000, hypothetically, 100,000. Is it the next year be 100 and a quarter? Um, or so we without work- Without doing anything different? We work with the HR department, and so they are, they've benchmarked that position based on current rates, but then, you know, they are working now on what that increase will be. Last year it was about 4%. Mm. Um, so, you know, we don't know what it would be this year, but um, that's basically determined by HR. We don't have sure. control over that part. Okay. Um, and the... Uh, well, can, I, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Um, City is probably doing pretty well now. All, with all those use fees, I mean, the building all over the place. And um, the use fees and everything else was to be boring. I mean, Longmont is certainly coffers. doing much better than, say, Loveland, which has got some problems and is having to make pretty major cuts. Um, but Longmont, like every other community, is facing the challenges of inflation and trying to catch up with you know, the years of inflation. So, um, what does that mean? Salaries? And so benefits. salaries, benefits, you know, general supplies. Utilities. And one of the biggest ones has been construction costs. And infrastructure. And so, you know, yeah. the, they're doing a major renovation of the safety and justice center, the you know, police and fire and courts and all that. And that, has been about a two year delay as they've, you know, they go out to bid and it's so far over that then they have to find additional money. And so they go out to bid again. <laughs> and once again, it's over. And so then they have to find more money. I think they've finally now pieced together enough money to start construction on that. But um, so the city manager has certainly said this is not a flush <laughs> year. This is not a year where, you know, we're going to be giving lots of things out. Um, but he is very aware that you know we are the only expansion that is happening in the city. There's renovations, you know, certainly in other facilities, but we're really the only facility that is expanding right now because we have private funding, and mm -hmm. and um, that's also been a concern of um, the Stewart Family Foundation. You know, the major donor is well, how is the city contributing to this project? Because you know they're they're contributing. Um, by far the majority of the total costs and, and uh, the city's contribution is pretty small and so you know, they've, they've been in conversation with the city manager about you know how does the city contribute and that's basically been his response well you know, we will be contributing ongoing uh, dollars which in the long term will cost more than the one-time <coughs> uh, capital fund but there's also a lot of other needs in the city so being uh, being able to advocate, which is not something I can do. I cannot advocate the city council, but the advisory board is, uh, that's, that's one of the responsibilities of the board is to advise city council on museum operations. Um, so whether that's individual conversations or going to city council and appearing at public invited to be heard, those are certainly options that uh, are open to you all to uh, mention the, the needs of the museum and the budget going forward. Um, All right, so when Susie arrives, we'll tell her we need a assistant curator for our exhibitions. <laughs> yes, yes. That's, uh, the first thing, uh, that's the first thing we'll say when she walks in. So our, uh, um, um, our council, city council <laughs> liaison is uh, Susie Hidalgo Faring, and unfortunately yeah, yeah. she usually <laughs> Uh, works until about five, so mm. she's uh, usually arriving uh, shortly. So. Well, uh, Eric, I know we can't, or you can't, lobby city council, mm -hmm. and you said we can, but 
there, there should be some way that you can organize behind the scenes with your help. So, so um, we certainly outside of a use. public meeting, I'm happy to <laughs> talk with you. But I mean, you know, we can yeah. yeah. strike I mean, that from the minutes. <laughs> <laughs> <we, laughs> but I'm just saying, if, if, if I have to have a right conversation right. with you, but yeah, just yeah. you and I, and then Bruce has one right. separately right. somewhere down the road, and then Linda. Right. I mean, it, uh, well, I mean, for for the ballot measure that was on last year, like when we went to city council, there were certainly boards that got together. They wrote a letter of support, mm -hmm. and then one person from the board went and presented it. And I think that is something that yeah, all of us could do. Should, yeah. Yeah. Um, through email, we could draft a letter together, mm -hmm. and then if someone is able to go to city council, we can present it with the full support. I think that that, for me, was very convincing when I saw other boards had um, the ability to say, not only do I support this as a citizen, but we have the unanimous support of our board. So I think that is something that would definitely be worth doing. That makes doing. a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Questions about the administration report? And before we leave that though, uh, so I guess we would need to know the right time to go to council. We don't want to go too early, we don't want to go too late, like at the last minute, but right. you know, I, so I we would, would say, need some guidance there. Yeah, I, I mean, generally, you know, the city manager presented kind of the initial budget message um, at Tuesday's city council meeting. This coming uh, Tuesday. Last. Oh, uh, last Tuesday. Uh, this, this, uh, yesterday. Um, so I think, you know, the decisions are going to be made over the coming months um, and then presented to city council at the end of August. Um, so the, the end of August, that's um, so what I'm just trying to get. Is the museum the will be at city council may 28th um, we are doing a promotion for our lego exhibit um, where each city council member is going to get their own little mini fig <laughs> little lego person um that's that's dressed to look like them um, Ooh, uh -oh. and so that, uh, that could be i don't know if that's going to go over well <laughs> Uh, I was talking to uh, Council Member Chris today. She was excited about it. So um, I think uh, that, that could be an opportunity to appear for what's invited to be here that day. Um, some uh, boards have managed to get on the council agenda. I think that's pretty much the council liaison has, has put that forward um, uh, as a possibility on the library board and the senior center board. Of course, we able to go. Uh, as part of an agenda item, um, that is up to council and, and the city manager to schedule those. Well, I know you were very helpful when I went, and, and, you know, with a lot of mm -hmm. information just to kind of remind them of what we actually do do out here because yeah. we can't always assume, as we know, that they know. Right. Right. If they. They have so many things exactly. on, on their plate that um, uh, I think you know, the, the power of, of the citizens coming to the council meeting is, is pretty significant. So, um, is there any uh, information about the art public places? Don't you, doesn't the museum run that now? We do, yes. yes. Um, art in public places <clears throat> is funded through a 1% for art um, set aside on all capital projects um, and because there's been a lot of capital construction um, particularly related to uh, flood recovery um, they are actually trying to spend down their fund balance they they're in a little different position in that, that um, they are not they don't have to go to the city for requests they, they basically have a uh, fund that is established to uh, provide art to the citizens. Um, so. I want to move on, talk a little bit about some of the other things in the uh, director's report. Um, collections. Uh, Elizabeth, I don't know if there's anything you would like to highlight from, from 
Yes. We've been making a lot of presentations, uh, fielding a lot of donations. Lots of people have been coming into the museum and calling the museums for photos for all these businesses opening. You know, oh, I want to put historic buildings on the wall, uh, historic photos on the wall. So we've had a couple of those this past month. Um, Are they in these restaurants? Or? Yeah, so like there's a pizza place going in, 325 Main. He purchased almost $400 worth of scans of historic Three, images. 325 Main. Yeah, the one white is about the fifth the fifth building in from if you count the Imperial Hotel as one. Uh huh. Um, little tiny spot. Okay. Um, currently runs a pizza place in Estes. And Tony's, Tony's, Tony's Pizza. Okay. Um, and then one of the banks, High Plains Banks, also purchased photos prints for their office, and we might be showing some photos at the new food hall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, it's like a temporary exhibit. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, and um, people coming in to do research on their homes. That's been a fairly popular request yeah, as well. I did that. Yeah, yeah. Really <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't finally get up to the mid 50s. You realize how yeah. much movement is happening downtown because a lot of the requests, like you just today, I fielded a call about 320, no, 233 Main Street, which was part of the Matt company. Yes. And I think is now a Two shop. Oh, he said he just built the build. I uh, just bought the building and has all these questions. So he's going to come in and do research tomorrow. Oh, that's so. a tattoo part. Oh god. I don't know. Is this tattoos on the side of the building? I don't know if that's what's oh. becoming or if that's what it was formerly. I didn't ask. I'll have to ask tomorrow. Okay. But yeah, that seems to be a lot from people who are purchasing in and around Main Street. Um, lots of activity going. It really is. Yeah. Cool. Well, speaking of art in public places. Um, they just installed these, they're calling them History Under Wraps. So these are graphic wraps that use historic photos from the museum collection to wrap traffic uh, signal boxes around town. That's uh, kind of cool. neat. Who and, came up with that idea? Um, that was, I think, uh, Angela Brill, our Art and Public Places Administrator. I'd seen it somewhere else and said, we should do that in Longmont. Yeah. And uh, so great. they did six this year, and they'll they'll keep adding, you know, a number every year, because uh, there's hundreds of those, you know, traffic control boxes around town. Yeah, they're pretty ugly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're much better that way. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a virtual tour available on the website if you want to know where they all are. So, let's see. Go on down to, they also installed new art on the move sculptures around Longmont. Um, so um, check those out. Under development. Um, so mark your calendars for the museum event of the year. September 7th to Saturday, the Sunset Soiree. It is our inaugural fundraising event will happen in our new courtyard. We'll kick off the courtyard and uh, we'll be a fundraiser for the capital campaign. Um, it will be one of the, one of the biggest events um, that we will do this year. And, and uh, we're, we're very excited about uh, taking a big step forward with our fundraising. Um, under marketing as as was mentioned, uh, we've got the uh, Parkway Food Hall display that will be going up uh, this coming week. Um, we've got the minifig uh, custom figures that uh, city council members will have next to their nameplates for the month of June. Um, and um, we had a uh, Spanish-speaking volunteer talk about our Picturing the West exhibit uh, on La Le Radio before, before that exhibit closed down. Um, some of the departments that, that aren't represented here um, are busily working elsewhere. Our exhibits department, uh, the Picturing the West exhibit, did close and they're in the midst of converting that gallery over to build, design and create with Lego. So that will open up June 1st. And that is all that I will highlight out of the director's report.
I don't have a report. Um, we don't have any unfinished business listed. Um, so for new business, um, we need to create an interview committee. For yes, so um, we have three applicants for the Museum Advisory Board. Uh, Bob, um, Catlin, um, and then uh, another Bruce. So I don't know if we can no. have two <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bruce uh, Katuna, who I have not uh, met or spoken with yet. I did invite him to this meeting as well, but he did not respond. Um, but um, we will need, by the end of this month, so a fairly short uh, turnaround, we'll need to have uh, a committee uh, interview those three applicants and then make recommendations for um, two city council. We actually have um, four openings. Uh, we have Bob's, uh, Bob is finishing out his term, plus we have uh, three open spots on the board. Um, but um, if any uh, current board members other than Bob uh, would be willing to serve on the committee, uh, we'd appreciate that. Sure. Tom, thank you. We need at least two. I can as well, but I've done it in the past to someone else. I'd like that to come. Uh, I can do it. I'll do it. Uh, What's the process? Do we meet them face to face, or we usually do it online? We've we've yeah. done it via Zoom in the yeah. past, um, okay. but I know Art and Pillar Places did them all in in person. Um, so you know, so it's up to us. It's kind of up to you all. What what you prefer? Okay. And um, Joanne will will set up the uh, the interviews. Uh, yeah. uh, there's a interview packet. Right, kind of yeah, questions, yeah, questions like that. And right. You can, can send out the, the application. And we'll do this by artificial intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> next year. <laughs> next year. <laughs> yeah, next year. Right. So are you, uh, we need one more. We need more applicants for the four positions. So unfortunately, we had one other applicant who had to withdraw because of uh, uh, other commitments. Uh, Great Antonio Lopez, who's actually a performer, uh, performed here at the museum several times. But, um, was he the uh, guy who did the Scottish? No, no, we did send uh, the information about, you know, here's how to apply to the gentleman that came with the proposal to um, have a bagpipe group uh, yeah, play right, here. Yeah. And I um, uh, didn't hear back. So, yeah. um, and the deadline, I don't know how firm it is or was. It wasn't really in mid April sometime. Um, they, they pushed it back a week, um, but it's uh, April was the deadline. So uh, they'll usually do another application round uh, in the fall. So uh, another opportunity to recruit uh, for the war event. I don't know if we need a motion, but it probably wouldn't hurt to have the board move to have uh, appoint uh, Tom and Bruce as our um, interview committee. So we have a motion to have Tom and Bruce serve as our interview committee. Are we, are we, is Tom and <laughs> Bruce allowed to vote? <laughs> 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 Board comments this time? Do we have any other board comments this time? We have a motion to adjourn. Um, second. All in favor? Unanimous. Mm -hmm.